Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got a great review for you today. This, the New Balance Rebel version 2. Loved testing this shoe out and now time to give you all of my thoughts and see if it's going to be going into rotation. Stay tuned, it's coming up. Guys, great to see you again for another shoe review. So this, the New Balance RC Elite version two, replacing a very different version one. We've done around about 80K, about 50 miles in this shoe now. Time to give you some facts and my thoughts as well. But as always, first things first, guys, I bought this shoe 100% with my own money off the New Balance website. Right, we'll split this review up into various sections. So we'll start chatting about some facts and figures. We'll talk about my likes, my dislikes, there's not many, and then a little sort of a conclusion as well, and chatting about is this shoe going to my rotation, and then a little bit at the end to say who I think this shoe would be suitable for. As always, you can move around using the mouse down below to see what you wanna see. Here comes the facts and figures. <laughs> So the shoe is coming in at a very respectable 120 pounds, around about 130 US dollars. We've got a stack height at the back, 30 mil, 24 at the front, giving a nice six millimeter drop. This shoe for me is coming in at 244 grams, very much on the light side. Been really enjoyed having that light feel on the shoe. It's a neutral shoe as well. I would call this a daily shoe, but it's a daily sort of speed shoe, one that you can take up to some faster paces quite comfortably. And New Balance have put their fuel cell, their premium foam into this midsole here. The same that you see in the RC Elite, their flagship model. No carbon foot plate in this shoe. As you can see, it's not uh, stiff like the uh, RC Elites. This is very much a road shoe. Yes, as always, we have taken this onto some light trails, but very much at home on the road. The width was good for me, but you can get it in that extra width setting if you get it on the New Balance website. And it was true to size, so all good there. Quickly, guys, if you are finding this video useful, please like and share it with a friend who might be looking for some new running shoes. Right, back to the video. Let's get stuck in to those likes. The first one is this was just a fun shoe to run in. It's fun, it's light, it's bouncy without having a big stack height as well. And a lightweight shoe. You just get your feet turning over so nice in the shoe, offering enough protection from the ground so you don't feel like you're going in a, out in a minimal shoe and putting your muscles and your joints and everything under stress. It's just an exciting, just great ride, responsive, sort of punchy, bouncy. You just enjoy running it. It brings a smile to my face. Kind of reminds me like the one of the best shoes of all time, that Nike Peg Turbo One. If you're uh, yearning to find a replacement for that shoe, this definitely could be something in that ballpark. The second like is just the upper in this shoe. You get so nicely locked down, no heel slip at all. Just feels so nice and protected in there. And it's breathable, no overheating issues, just nice lockdown fit, no blisters, no hot spots, just been, been a joy to run in. And my final positive is just the versatility of this shoe. You can use this for all sorts of different distances, all sorts of different speeds. As I said earlier on, it really is what I call a daily shoe, but it can just have that little turn of magic where you want to get out there and say, right, I've got a speed session today, I'm doing some K reps now or some mile reps. I want to use this at park run for an all out effort without that worry of having to have a dedicated race shoe. This you could use, definitely use this as your daily that you can just take out and have that bit of fun on the weekend in those races as well. I would say I probably wouldn't want to do some all out long runs in this, some marathon or even run a marathon in it. I think it's good for that sort of five, 10 and half racing, but no reason why you couldn't. I just like a little bit more protection for those really, really longer runs out there. But yeah, versatility, a really big five stars. Right guys, moving on to the negatives. Now I have really struggled with the shoe to come up with some negatives. The only one for me is on the outsole. I just am a little bit worried about the durability of this shoe. For me, I think you could probably take this up to maybe 350, maybe 400 miles at an absolute top. It's just the foam is very soft and with what they've put, they have got some more durable bits on the sides here and on the back, but this, 
foam, it's just starting to wear away for me, as I say, after about that sort of 50 miles. And I just don't think it's gonna last that long, unfortunately. But no shoe is perfect, and that really is the only negative I can think of with this shoe. Right guys, today's question of the day, carbon plated shoes, are you a fan or not? Let me know down in the comments. It would be great to know. For me, this has been the best non-carbon plated shoe I've ever run in, so it'd be great to know your shorts. Carbon plated shoes, win or fail? So who is gonna be best suited for this shoe? Well, I'd say if you're training for a 5K, 10K or half marathon, doing the type of workouts you should be doing for those that type of training, this could be a great all-in-one solution without having to go out and buy a separate, full-on carbon-plated race shoe. You could have a lot of fun in this shoe. So that's the first person. The second person, not everybody wants a carbon-plated shoe. They are stiff, they put a lot of stress on some of the muscles in your body. Yes, they can be really fast as well. But if you're not a fan of the carbon-plated shoes, this for me is the fastest non-carbon plated shoe that I found, so a solid option there. And the third option is for someone that wants that shoe that can do a little bit of everything. For me, it really is that shoe that can deliver across all different distances. Is this shoe going into my rotation? Well, it has been in my rotation. I have been using this and it just makes you want to run fast. It's that shoe, it's quite hard to go out and just do an all easy run. That's a challenge for you guys. Can you just do an easy run in this shoe without wanting to pick up the pace? As I say, very much in my rotation, we've got loads of shoes in at the moment to test. So not using it too much, but I really find myself when I want to go out, put some music on the headphones, have a bit of fun. This is the shoe I've been reaching for. So that's it guys, that's the review. Very much recommended. Definitely get out and check out this shoe. And let me know down in the comments, have you had the Ve Rebel version two? Did you try the Rebel version one? I've really liked very different shoes, completely redesigned, as I said, uh, the different upper, different midsole, different outsole, two shoes that I've really enjoyed testing from New Balance. We've got the Hoka Bondi X coming in very soon. Look how, Oh, super stiff this is with a carbon plate in it compared to the Rebel. So yeah, that review will be coming in soon. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you don't already. Thank you very much to the Patreon supporters, the YouTube supporters out there as well for making all these videos happen. Check out the website for the latest merch and your new amazing running hats and bubbles or poms if you're in America. Right, that's it guys. Thank you so much. We will see you very soon in the next one.